We're going to take a few moments here to actually talk about a product called GNU IceCat. Uh, so my name is Aaron Jones, and I work here at the Chandler Police Department, but I do not represent the Chandler Police Department, so everything that I say is just my opinion, and it's just me, and if you don't like it, take it up with me, please. Um, but I have a master's in intelligence analysis with a focus in cybersecurity. Uh, I have been doing these talks pretty regularly for almost uh, two years now, I think. Uh, we're coming up on the two-year anniversary of these. Uh, in addition to that, I'm a software developer. I write code. Uh, I do blogging, and I go out and I talk, and I do tons of cybersecurity stuff. I teach as well. I've taught at colleges. I've been an adjunct professor. Uh, just, I, I feel like I'm relatively hooked into the cybersecurity community. And uh, in addition to that, I just love being able to teach people. Uh, so this is actually a web browser. And if you're not familiar with GNU IceCat, GNU IceCat is the GNU, um, I want, I'm going to call it replacement for Firefox. And uh, it is supposed to be more ethical. It is free software. And uh, if you did not know, if you do use Firefox, Mozilla does distribute their system with uh, included non-free software, like plugins, add-ons, so on and so forth. There's a ton of stuff that is considered non-free within uh, Firefox. And so GNU IceCat pulls all that out. And uh, in addition to that, if you're not familiar with the Tor browser, the Tor browser is built on Firefox. And I do feel that that is also potentially harmful to your freedom. Uh, in very in several senses to the word okay so if you're following along you can actually open this link here so this one is just one of the reports on uh, the FBI and their use of malware in order to defeat the Tor browser uh, I really love this part where it uses the word a grenade and they put it in big parentheses and everything. Uh, it's supposed to be scarier that way. I kind of, and I'm sorry, when I say that I love that, I absolutely hate it. I can't stand when they decide to do stuff like that. But um, IceCat built on much of the same framework as Firefox. So what does this have to do with Tor, right? Uh, it's actually fairly easy to install. If you're using uh, Arch or Manjaro or anything like that and you have access to Yaourt, Yaourt can automatically install this. If you're using something different or you want to build it from source, uh, GNU offers an FTP setup. So setup itself is relatively easy. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a real big fan of running Tor remotely as opposed to running it on your system. Uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, but I'm going to kind of boil it down to the fact that uh, A, if you're running Tor locally to your network, you immediately become a target. We know this because of the leaks from Edward Snowden. So when Edward Snowden leaked everything, it came out and it was told to literally everybody in the whole world, if you run Tor, if you're searching for this stuff, or you're even a subscriber to Linux Journal, you're on a watch list. So uh, there's probably, I would say 99.9% .9 of everybody in here is probably on a watch list, just on account of the fact that we all are interested in Tor. We've all used uh, Linux. We've probably all either read or had a subscription to Linux Journal at some point in our life. So all of those things stack up against us. So this command right here, as you can see, you can just simply port forward off of like a VPS. So you can SSH in, uh, connect to port 9050, which is the Tor port. And uh, upon doing so, that exposes it to your local host. Super simple. If you get yourself a VPS, set up Tor, uh, use SSH forwarding, and you're good to go on that end. Uh, now, to set up IceCat itself, the first thing you're, wanted, you're going to want to do is actually disable JavaScript. I'm, uh, so if you didn't know, I'm the person who hates JavaScript. I think that there's lots and lots of complaints in our YouTube um, comments section about the fact that I complain about JavaScript all the time. Uh, hate it. Absolutely hate it. Can't stand JavaScript. So disable it. In addition to that, do not load custom fonts. So when the system asks you, hey, should I use custom fonts, do not do that. Uh, tracking protection is fine. In addition to that, if you're comfortable with doing so, you can also change um, 
a few other items, but you know what? We're not we're not going to cover that for this right now. Uh, you can isolate your request your requests to first party domains. We can spoof refers if you are interested in doing so, and that actually uh, is how it's spelt uh, whenever you're dealing with the privacy settings. And then you can also block third party requests. Now I have images here of the settings themselves. So if you download this and you decide you want to experiment it with it, all you have to do is make your screen look just like this, okay? And then once we do that, we want to set up our network proxy. And it's going to be a SOX proxy. And again, images. So all we need to do is set manual proxy configuration, set up our SOX host, SOX v5, uh, local host, port 9050. And then uh, make sure that you proxy DNS when using SOX v5. And then upon doing so, once you have accomplished all of that, it's extremely easy to just go to that link that will open up the actual Tor testing section, and it should report a congratulations message. Now, if you're concerned that you are either being tricked or potentially this may be harmful to you, or you just want to find out if this is actually the correct way to do that, uh, I have a curl request that you can run that will actually go directly to that web page and then uh, if everything is successful it should come back with the words congratulations so not only can you test it in your browser then you can hit the command line run a curl request and then you're going to get the exact same congratulations message just in the command line just to make sure that your actual socks proxy is functional okay so does that mean that we're elite invisible hackers who can never be caught now yes no <laughs> Not after last month. Not correct. Not after last month. <laughs> so no, no, you're not. But in addition to that, uh, I know one of the arguments that we're going to hear pretty regularly is, um, well, I need JavaScript to be able to run web pages. I need a web browser to be able to do stuff. Or uh, maybe they're going to make the argument that, well, the Tor browser is more secure because they pay attention to it more or whatever. Uh, right down here, threat-wise, I'm going to tell you right now, This CVE right here, that's a remote code execution exploit that's written in CSS. Yeah. So if you are using a web browser and you are allowing somebody to send you CSS, there are methods by which you can still attack that web browser right off of this CVE. Okay? Uh, it's a uh, integer overflow that occurs by sending malformed CSS requests. All right. So just because we turned off JavaScript doesn't mean that we're safe. All right. Because even if you're getting HTML or you're getting CSS, still potentially vulnerable. Now everybody knows that I'm a big fan of eLinks, and I love eLinks, and eLinks is like my go-to browser. But guess what? Potentially still vulnerable. Right. But there's ways of mitigating that. Right. So. Hopefully, people are happy about that little introduction. <laughs>